Hello, gorgeous ladies. It is Camille here from Prioritize Love. I help driven single women in how to attract a great life partner so they can have that passionate, fulfilling and romantic relationship they truly deserve. And today I've got a really special guest on the interview. The interview series is called Dare to Have It All, Next Level Women, Dare to Have It All. And my special guest is based in the States, in um, based in LA at the moment and all over the world, I believe. Her name is Jenny Taylor. So welcome on the call. So happy to have you here. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. So my first question to you is for, for my, my clients are mainly in Australia. So most of them probably wouldn't have heard about you just yet. So if you could just tell us a little bit about what it is you do and why you're so passionate about it. Absolutely. Um, I own the United States most popular longstanding boudoir photography company called Jenny Taylor Boudoir Photography, where our tagline is we transform the everyday woman into a bombshell. We have photographed yeah. almost 4000 women across the world that have flown in from all over. And um, what, what I've done differently is instead of women having to wear lingerie, which is be boudoir or bedroom, um, long time ago, 10 years ago, I had a client that called and said, I don't want to wear lingerie. I want to wear a dress. And would you please accept me? And I said, well, of course, it's not about lingerie or what you wear. This is a confidence empowering experience. And um, so that led into, we've had women up to the age of 85 years old that have come in to do this uh, amazing experience for themselves, this transformative experience. And then about five years ago, um, I was in a very unique situation in my life to where I had to really start looking at why am I in this situation? Um, instead of blaming other people, I started to need to learn about myself and my internal, um, you know, who I was. And it led me into the most amazing therapist ever who had changed my life. And I've completed over 300 hours of therapy and a quarter of a million dollars. And now I lead women into, um, I host women's luxury retreats where we go back in time and we find the traumas that we had been through um, that really are holding us back from living our best life. So I call myself like a trauma recovery coach or a sparkle coach, which is like the opposite. And I also do a lot of one-on-one -on -one coaching and I have three other businesses as well, but those are the two most popular, I would say for the ladies. Amazing. So... Uh, there's so much to talk about. Well, one, one thing I'd, I'd love to ask you is when we had a quick chat before around what you do is very much helping p women in, in f feeling beautiful and desirable. And I, with my work, I, it's a big part of helping my clients with attracting a life partner. Of course, we need to find, we need to feel confident in our body. We need to feel sexually confident and desirable and beautiful. And I've coached so many women and different ages, mainly in their 30s and 40s, but no matter what shape they're in, you know, if they're a little bit more curvy or really slim and super toned, there's a common theme around, I just don't feel beautiful. Um, you know, I need to lose more weight or, you know, I feel too old or there's just never, you know, never that thing of like, yeah, I feel really great in my body. I feel so at home. And and that's something that you really help women transform with both of your businesses, I, um, I can imagine. So what do you feel are the main ingredients for women to really change that, that, that thing that they have around not feeling sexy enough or beautiful enough or not feeling really at home in their bodies? So from working with 4,000 women, I've really experienced everything, um, every body shape and size. And what I can say is 99%, well, I would say no woman comes in and says, I'm a 10 and I'm hot and I'm ready for this. No matter if we, if I view them as that, it, nobody thinks that of themselves. And so, you know, the first thing is, is like you said, the confidence. And I always say women that come in to work with me, even if they're bringing a dress or the skimpiest lingerie, they're nervous. And I said, please trust my company. It's a five-star business. After 10 years, we will take care of you. We'll walk you through the process and make it easy. But it really is just like picking up the phone to make the appointment and then getting out of their car to walk in the door is like literally the first piece of it. And I always say like, look at this as more of a checking something off your box uh, for the year, the, your bucket list and try something different because that once you do something outside your comfort zone, you do gain that confidence. You know, once you fly over the fear and land on the other side, you're like, oh, wow, I can do that. And that'll lead you into doing more things going forward. Um, 
but what you really talked about was the trigger that most women have and most all people have of the not feeling good enough, whatever that looks like. And so if you don't feel good enough inside, you won't attract the right people in your life. You won't attract with friends, relationship. And so that's what I do with my um, coaching programs is we really dig deep to find where was that little girl inside of you that first felt not good enough. And let's have her finally tell her story. And it's a, it's a timeline therapy process that we do. And it's the most powerful thing that you could ever uncover because what we do is we find that point in time and the little girl gets to tell her story and we basically rewire the subconscious to be able to let her transform her story into something more desirable for herself, which gains this internal strength then that we as women today can move forward from. And remember that when we get triggered after this process, I have them go through, once that trigger comes in and they think, oh, I don't feel good enough. It kind of like goes in the brain, but doesn't, doesn't circulate the same way because it's been rewired. Um, and so I just want any woman that's listening to know that I was one of those women that didn't feel good enough. I was a very insecure person. I had um, a very flat chest uh, and was made fun of when I was growing up. And that was one of the reasons I started the boudoir company was um, I just, I never thought I could do something like that. And I thought, well, this is the most challenging thing I could ever think of doing. And so, um, you know, nobody believed in me back then that I could do this. And um, I just want to tell everybody that, you know, I always, I'm a regular person. I grew up in what I call the cornfields of Chicago um, in the suburbs. And if I can do it, then anybody else can do it too. But you need to find that internal core strength that nobody else is going to give you. You have to believe in yourself first. Absolutely. I love that. So, so what was it for you in regards to, you know, which leads me to the other question that we were chatting about, about really thought going for it and creating an extraordinary life. And you've, you've created an outstanding life for yourself. You're helping thousands of women um, all around the world. You're in your power. You do something you, you're passionate about. Um, what was that driver to keep going, even though, you, you know, no one believed in yourself. You said like earlier on, you, you didn't have a university degree. You, you, you know, you, you could have easily sort of um, given up along the way with your work. Like what was the, what was that inner belief or that driver that kept you going and moving forwards? You know, I, I've been through a lot of traumatic events in my life and I feel like we have the opportunity to turn our pain into a purpose. And I've always done that. And, um, you know, I came from, my parents were divorced when I was seven and a college dropout and um, really were in some bad, tough times throughout my life. And what I've always just really wanted to do was say, um, no matter what position of life I got into, hey, you know, it's okay. Like, I'm just like you. And, um, you know, that strength that comes that pushes me forward is helping others. And I've always been like that since I've been younger. And so when you say step into my power, um, I don't look at myself as any different than any other person or woman on the planet, just because I own a, you know, multi-million dollar company. And I'm proud to say that because I started off with nothing when I started it. Um, but, uh, you know, I want to, if I can change one person's way that they see themselves in a day, I feel like I've accomplished greatness. And, you know, we only have one life to live. And if this is our last day and our last moment, and I'm spending it with you here in this moment, like, let's make this the best moment that we can. And um, sometimes life deals us hands that we don't want. And we, I think we need to find the lessons that we need in those specific darker moments. And to always just keep remembering that there is a silver lining, even if we can't see it, and to just really appreciate the moments for what we have and that life is not perfect. It's not meant to be. And without the darkness, we wouldn't know what the light is. And just to keep that flame going for all people, no matter what circumstance they're in or what hardship they're going through, and just to be like a really authentic human to people is just like what keeps me going and why I love doing this so much. I love that so much wisdom, especially that, you know, that life isn't perfect. And there is always, there's always, whenever we go through a really difficult time, it's hard to see it in the moment, but looking back, there will be a, a silver lining, as you said, back to the, um, to the photo, you know, the boudoir photography, um, 
that you do and the, the transformation that women see when once they do see their images. I can imagine, I can imagine that there's a, there's a huge shift once they see themselves, you know, um, looking gorgeous and, and, and what, what happens to women, you know, when they've, once they've completed that process? Oh my gosh. So 10 years next year in business, I've had clients from nine years ago message me and say, you know, they take out their album and they remember how amazing they felt in that moment. And so, you know, a lot of us, my average age of my client is 35 years old right now. And so it's usually either moms or women that have been divorced or can't have kids or whatever. They've been through hard times in their life. And that's my client. And so most women I know don't do their hair and makeup every day and, you know, don't dress up in lingerie or a dress or whatever. And so when they turn themselves, we, when we turn them around um, to see themselves for the first time in the mirror and they just get this glimmer and they sometimes will get tears in their eyes, like, oh my gosh, I'm so beautiful. And I'm like, but you're always beautiful. It's not the makeup. You're always beautiful inside. And once they see the pictures, I mean, my team is absolutely, I have 20 women that work for me. They are the most amazing, heartfelt, genuine people. And they do transform these women. But in reality, I do have wonderful five-star photographers and hair and makeup artists, but it is the clients. It's really them. And we don't do, I don't believe in um, airbrushing people as far as like making them bigger, longer, taller, smaller. So yeah. we give the clients exactly who they are. And I think that they really appreciate that. So when clients, you know, people, women will call and say, I, I'd like my hair shorter or whatever it is. And I'm like, no, we won't change you like that. Um, I think it's a lot more authentic when the women get to see themselves and know that it really is them and that we all have imperfections and that we're perfectly imperfect. Love that. And it's, it's that whole thing of, we often don't see our own beauty. Our, our, our best friends and all the people around us, they see us in a different way to what we see ourselves. So I think that, you know, to, to have those photos taken, it's just that real evidence then of like, wow, this is the woman I am. I just don't feel like her all the time. And then... Absolutely. The other thing is when I started this 10 years ago and I was searching out for myself to go do boudoir photography... You have to be very careful in this industry. There are some horror stories, um, especially if you think about taking your clothes off, if you want to do a lingerie shoot, where you're going to do that. Um, and what we provide at my studios, we have them in Chicago, Laguna Beach, Nashville, um, a very safe environment, very glamorous, like beautiful homes I have with crystal chandeliers and beautiful furniture. And what that does for the women is it, brings their comfort level to like an all time max so that they can come in and actually like, they don't have to be like, who's watching behind a two way mirror is this videotape so that their senses can calm and they can really step into who they are and, and enjoy the experience because of the safety and luxury that we've provided for them too, which is, I don't want anyone listening. I, if anyone's listening and they want to go do this, I'm a spokesperson. I get interviewed on cosmopolitan, all the, things and really know where you're going when you start taking your clothes off for this type of photography session. I just really want to warn people of what could be out there. That's a huge, that's, that's so, that's so valid because it's such, it is, it is something that is, you know, you feel more vulnerable. And also I believe that I guess having, having a female photographer as well is, is, uh, you know, I'm not saying that a man couldn't make a a woman feel really comfortable but I guess it, it is that really beautiful safe environment that you're creating um, for your client yeah. so I'm curious to find out a little bit more about your 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 you're an extremely driven woman you're you know you do you really you're, you're adding value what is and you're adding massive value you cre you, you're changing the world what is your what are your big What's, what's next for you in your chapter? Like, let's say the next five years, the next 10 years, like what are your bigger, biggest aspirations and goals for yourself? So um, it's funny that you asked me that and that I already mentioned uh, that I was insecure when I was younger and very flat chested. I'm actually in bed right now as we're um, on this podcast filming because I have breast implant illness. I'm not sure if you've heard of that before. No, no, I haven't actually. The FDA here just came out with that it is a real thing and that, you know, breast implants can cause cancer and this whole slew of symptoms. 
And so I've been dealing with my health for about a year. I'm normally very healthy. And um, I was just um, diagnosed with costochondritis, which is a inflammation of the rib cartilage. And when I started Googling, you know, why do I have this? I had a woman, uh, her in, uh, a YouTube channel came up and she said she had costochondritis and anyways found out that it was linked to this breast implant illness. So I'm now having to get my breast implants out after having them for six years, wow. which I've done all this internal work and I'm going to continue about going back to my flat chest itself, which I didn't ever anticipate doing. But when you just asked me what I'm going to do for the next five years, I'm once I'm better and able to get out of bed, cause this is, I'm almost bedridden almost most of the day at this point. Um, I am going to start like, I hope a non-for-profit for women that can't afford to get their implants out. This is a major epidemic. They've hidden wow. 350,000 cases across the world right now. Um, and it's um, something I just never thought that would land in my lap almost. And I, I've taken these experiences throughout my life and I, I hope all women can do this. No matter what pain you're going through, someone else is going through that too. And you're not alone, even though you might feel like you are. And so I think it's just so important to um, be honest, like, hey, this is really what I'm going through. And I was insecure when I got these and I don't want to go back to being flat chested and um, just creating that awareness and community for women to know that um, just because I travel the world and own these companies, I'm no different than anybody else where I'm getting hit with this illness myself. And so um, I hope to do events around the world. The first one's going to be in LA um, next year. And so whatever comes my way that I can help other people, that's what I will always keep doing until I die. Wow. So thank, thank you so much for, for sharing this very personal you know, story with us. And it's just, um, yeah, really, really sorry that you're having to go through this. But again, like your ability to turn it into something something really empowering for other women and for you also you you're you're holding that space for yourself to to look after yourself and that it just means you are you're very much aligned with who you are and you know what how you how, how you can how can, how you can transform things as you as you move, move towards to you know the future so such a, what, what do you if there was a bigger you know we talked about the silver lining with challenges like I guess, what do you think this, this personal challenge is about in the bigger picture? Is it about then empowering other women or is there something else there for you? You mean as far as this illness goes? That's right. You know, I think everything, ever, anything you shove underneath the rug is going to come out at some point. And I'll be honest, I've done so much personal work about internally and changed the way I look at everything in life. And maybe I didn't look at the insecurity part as far as my appearance goes. That's one thing I've been thinking the last couple of months. And so this is now opening up this door of, I am good enough, no matter if I have the biggest boobs in the world or nothing at all, or hair or no hair or feet, it doesn't matter. I'm still a woman and it's my internal spirit um, that leads me. It's not my external. And so I think that this is the hopefully the final straw that will put me together as my old self and all the transformational work that I've done over the last six years to really just be the best me. So I'm going back to how I was before this. And, um, you know, I just pray that all women that are going through it, it's terrible. Um, and you would never expect this just to yeah. know that, that you can get through it no matter what. Love that. Lo love that insight. And you know, what, what I'm hearing is like just maybe another layer of that total unconditional love for self and back, you know, being, being totally who you are and, and being lovable and exactly the way you are, you know, big breasts or no breasts doesn't really matter. Love that. So wrapping up, I'm aware of time just with women who would love to follow you um, or find out about your, your retreats or your, your photography, what's the best way for you, for them to find um, you online? Yeah, I would, um, if you want to shoot me a DM on Instagram, everything Jenny Taylor, and then my website, jennytaylor.com. All my stuff is listed on there. I'd love to hear from you guys if you have any questions. Um, and also if you have any questions, if you are from, if you are not from the United States, I can send over some things if you're looking for boudoir photography and just can't make it over here for some safety. Um, I have some blogs and things for safety that I would love to send everybody. That would be amazing. 
and um, of course I'll be sharing your website underneath the um, underneath the, the the video as well. So I guess maybe one more one more um, piece of advice for women who really want to have an amazing life, and they might have that thing of like, you know, she's amazing. She's got that courage. She is gorgeous. She's sure she's had some challenges, but you know, like, am I really? Can I really have it all? Can I really? You can I really have an amazing career, a great relationship, following my passion? You know, what is there? Is there one piece of last, a last piece of wisdom you would love to share with the women listening? Yeah. If, if you are listening and you feel that way, if you don't believe in yourself, it doesn't matter if you have a tribe, a million people tell you how good enough you are. If you don't believe it inside, you won't be able to go forward. So if, no matter where you are, no matter how much money you have, what relationship, if you have kids, don't have kids, whatever. We are all here to be able to do whatever we want. And we have the opportunities to be able to do that. And, you know, like I said, I came from a little farm town and my, we grew up with $42 um, for two weeks for three of us that had needed to include food. And I took that and generated a multi-million dollar empire. So if I can do it, you guys can do it too. Love that. So, so inspiring. Thank you so much again for your time, your wisdom, and um, we will definitely be in touch. So thank you so much. It was so nice talking to all you guys. I hope to talk to you guys on Instagram. We'll see you there. Thank you again.